Um, so one other area of historical and political um, significance which you uh, shed spiritual light on is anti-Semitism. And I saw recently that you were promoting this course that you're doing on anti-Semitism. Do you want to give our viewers a bit of a brief overview on what you describe as some of the spiritual roots of anti-Semitism? Yeah, I mean, the oh man. I mean, anti-Semitism has expressed itself in, in so many ways throughout the centuries. And no matter what the Jews were doing, the those who didn't like them found a reason not to like them. So in one country, the Jews were the capitalists, and so we hate them because they're capitalists. In another country, they were the communists, so we hate them because they're communists. Uh, in, in one time, we uh, we don't like them because they, they don't blend in enough. The other is because they, don't, they blend in too much. There's always a reason to hate the Jews. And so it, it's interesting because it's not like other forms of hatred, other forms of prejudice that you might see uh, towards other groups. Usually, if if the direction or if the or if the, the quoted reason for the uh, for the discrimination is is eliminated, the hatred stops. Right? We don't like you because you're like this. Well, if that stops, then we'll start liking you, right? <laughs> the Jews, it hasn't, it hasn't really worked like that. We we think that if we're just going to be more like them and we're going to blend in, they're just they're going to like us, right? There's no reason for them not to like us. We're exactly like them. And and one of the clearest manifestations that you see that is in our most recent history uh, in in um, in Germany, where Germany was the most cultured society of the time. One of one of the one of the this where this is not a backwards country this was not a third world nation this was a highly technologically advanced highly uh highly civilized high society over here and the jews who were living there in in many ways were very much a part of german culture if you saw on the street two guys standing next to each other one could be full-on german one could be of jewish of of Jewish roots, but as far as the way they talked, the way that they looked, the way that everything about them was the same on the on the surface. I believe they actually occupied ten percent of the professions in Germany. And 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 still they were the they, they were still hated. They were still people just knew for whatever reason, they didn't even know why. They just hated the Jew. There's an interesting uh, spiritual concept. So the Talmud mentioned something interesting. It says that the when the Jews got the Torah at Mount Sinai, the reason it was called Sinai is because it comes from the same root word as the word sina, of hatred. And through the Sinai experience, through God sort of uh, engaging with one nation in a unique way, that that embedded a certain idea of, of hatred uh, among the nations. That, again, this doesn't mean that every person who's not of the Jewish faith hates the Jews actively and is going to is going to do something bad to them. But uh, collectively, there's a reason why throughout the centuries, large swaths of the population, no matter where we go, find reason to dissociate themselves from the from the Jews. And there's almost an embedded spiritual uh, distinction created at Sinai. In other words, that, that there should always be this sort of separation between the Jewish people and the nations of the world. Doesn't mean we shouldn't be friendly, doesn't mean we shouldn't work together for a common cause, but it means that there is an inherent difference between the Jewish mission, the mission that the Jews are on and the way in which we go about it, and the, nation, and the nations of the world. And in order to preserve that distinction, anti-Semitism is, is embedded and when when need be it swells up to maintain that sep that separation this is sort of like a, a more of a, of a spiritual underlying uh premise but this is why and how it manifests itself in so many different ways in, in so many different uh times as well so what's the solution to it <laughs> that's uh that people have to join the course Oh, you can't tease us like that. <laughs> I, I, I think until I think until Mashiach comes, the 
we, we're going to continue on this path. People are going to find reasons to, to hate us. But the more proud we are, is the, the way, certainly the way not to beat it, uh, excuse me, cer certainly the way that is not going to work is just by cowering and saying, okay, we're going to be more like you or whatever however you want us to be. The, the, the main objective, and the, you see time and again, on a personal scale, on a practical scale, the more a Jewish person goes with pride and goes with passion in what it is that they're doing that is Jewish, but not, not in a confrontational way, but, but stands their ground and does, does what they need to do, we, we see that the nations of the world respect them. Yeah, we I see it both on a personal level, right? On, on, you, on an individual level, like uh, just friends and associates of yours that are not Jewish, and also on a collective. If, if we stand strong, and passionate and go in the in the ways of the Torah, everybody else will find respect in that. Yeah, and I think not just pa passion, but also openness and share, willing to share with others, and and just be just be just be comfortable in our skin as practicing Jews. And I think part of um, you know what I've heard other people talk about is that you know we've been a bit of a mystery to the nations because we've had walls up, rightly so. Oftentimes those been those walls have been put up against our own choosing. Um, but now we live in an age in which there is much more visibility for, for openness and um, a way to conquer anti-Semitism or Jews being a mystery is to give people reason to love Judaism, people to love what, what, we, what we are here to represent. Mm -hmm.